Hmm. Hi. Alright guys, so I haven't really done this type of video in the past. Uh I have never like commented on like updates and um I've never given my opinions on the game, but I, f I thought, hey, maybe this could be fun. And it could also help in case, like, when people come to my chat and they ask about my opinion on something, then I can just direct them to this video. So, anyways, uh, let's get started. We're gonna watch the video first. I figure that's, like, you know, like, the best thing you could do. Um, so, yeah. Here we go. Welcome everyone to this first edition of the Dev Tapes. Uh, this video will cover the too long then read of our Dev Update blog post. So today we're bringing in a few guests that are going to present upcoming changes in design, UI, and animation for the PTB early next week. So here we go. Hmm. Okay. All right. So welcoming uh, Sarah, lead UI designer on DVD. All right, Sarah. Big Hi. changes. Big changes yeah. coming for the UI. Um, yeah. First off, let's start. Why are we changing the UI in this the next good. update? And what are we changing? So when players log in uh, to the PTB for the first time uh, and start their match, uh, the biggest change that they're going to notice is that we've completely redesigned the layout of the HUD. Um, this means that uh, the position of some of the elements that you're used to are no longer in the places that they they were before uh, this update. Um, essentially, what we've done is we've broken each of our pieces of our UI, which we refer to as widgets, um, into their own section so that they have their own space. Um, we had reached a point with the UI where uh, our current live UI was no longer able to support all of the features that we wanted to add from the game design team. Uh, so we needed to find a place uh, to give each of these UI elements um, hmm. a, a new home uh, that had enough room for us to uh, add um, animations and visual effects as well as any new pieces of information and features. All right, uh, do you want to tell us a few examples uh, of what we can expect in the new UI changes? Yeah, we have a couple new features that you'll notice. Um, the biggest and most obvious one is probably hook counts. Um, we now have a separate widget uh, for killers, which displays the number of times you have hooked players in the match. Um, this is a positive way of displaying a killer's progress in the match previously uh, we found for killer oh, wait sorry i'm gonna pause it right here uh okay so you guys can see it over here this is like it, it makes it easier to know like how many times you've hooked each survivor i think this is what they're referring to because i don't think they're like they've added a number on each survivor which says oh this person is on the second hook or whatever i think maybe you need to uh, count it all as as a total we'll see maybe i'm wrong players uh, the only sense of any uh, gameplay change that they got was the generator count slowly slowly counting downwards and this of course doesn't feel very good if you're a killer uh, so we wanted to give them something that they can feel proud of and look back and see their progress throughout the match for survivors uh, they have their own version of this which is displayed on the actual um, player status uh, widget this uh, tells your fellow survivors how many times your teammates have been hooked. This way you can know whether or not it's worth it to go in for that save or not. Um, as well as giving you a general... <gasps> no, wait, 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 wait. I'm dumb, I'm dumb. I think... Can this thing go away? I think it's the number over here that says how many times they've been... No, wait. Or... I, 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 never mind, I'm confused again. Overall. Uh, another feature that we have is... Um, the healthy and injured states for uh, players have been uh, replaced with portraits of those characters. So from uh, at a glance, you'll be able to see who's playing as Claudette, who's playing as Nia, um, which Dwight is in the uh, closet. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I get it, I get it. Uh, so, I so basically, hold on. I just need to make sure that I'm right. 
So okay, so uh, there will be portraits. Okay, we get it. Okay. Who's playing of Claudette, who's playing but will it be a p Nia, like visible, um, which like when you load into the map closet? or? <laughs> That's something I'm Sorry. a bit unsure about. Uh, I think there's uh, one more thing as well that uh, has been asked forever, and you're very happy about. <laughs> I am <laughs> thrilled to announce this one. Um, along with this update, we are releasing two new mm -hmm. uh, settings. Um, which allow players to control the scale of their menus and HUD. Uh, I like so it. So no longer will your UI scale be determined by your screen resolution. Uh, you can control it yourself. I like this. Uh, all right. So just to wrap this up, this new uh, UI change is uh, allowing us some space for new awesome fe uh, features in the future. Uh, did you have anything else to add, Sarah? Yeah. So we, we know this is a big change. Um, it's it's gonna take us all a little bit of time i think to to get used to the new placement um that's a natural and expected part of of any change um we've all been looking at this particular hud for for five plus years at this point uh so there's going to be a period of adjustment however uh, this new layout is going to allow us a lot more breathing room to add new features and um, expand what we can do for you guys in the future awesome so this is not the final form that's what you're saying no we have lots of new ideas uh that we're we're excited to share with with you guys uh in in the next uh uh couple months and and years to come uh can't really talk about it, much of it right now but we are excited to share it all with you awesome well thank you so much for joining us today sarah happy to be here so uh okay so i'm just gonna pause it here uh i want to give my two cents on the ui update i like the fact that you can like make it smaller like that's cool and i'm not against make like implementing a new ui because it's like the game it has to like evolve it has to like it can't just keep the same ui like forever uh i come from csgo where you know like csgo it doesn't change that much really like it, it didn't it didn't change for years uh even they got new ui they like uh, like menu and they what's it called P P Pan panaro i don't even know pana something uh it, they got a new ui basically so you have to like <laughs> the game is like evolving right so yeah but one thing that i have to say is that i'm not a big fan of I do know that I did see a few complaints on Twitter about this, and I wasn't too sure about... Uh, I hadn't watched this video, so I didn't know, like, um, what the whole idea was. But basically what they're saying is that it's not it's not a final, like, product, or, like, it's not final. The UI changes they're making right now, it's not final. They might do make m more changes and so on. Um, but what I would have preferred is that you could customize it. And customizing your UI, it's nothing new. Uh... Old games like World of Warcraft, they've had it forever. You can customize things. People love customizing their stuff. So imagine... Uh, oh, and it's not just World of Warcraft. CSGO as well. Uh, you have timers up there, like a uh, round timer. You can move it to the bottom. Uh, you can change it from avatar, so you see the amount of people alive instead. You can move that to the top. Um, health. Like There are things you can move, basically. And that is what I think the future of UI would be, that people can like customize their own things and be like, hey, this is my, you know, it looks different on every, if, if a person goes to a different, uh, like a streamer, then they will see that every streamer has a different UI. Like, like it looks different on everyone. And that is something I find cool. And I hope that's something they will do uh, with UIs in the future, at least. But I do like the fact that they do implement new UIs. So, or the new UI. So uh, it's, a, it's a step in the good, it's a good step in the right direction. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, okay, uh, let's continue. Uh, welcoming Ethan, game designer on Dead by Daylight. Uh, hello, Ethan, and welcome. Um, Ethan, we're closing up on the PTB release, so do you want to tell us what's in store for the clown? Yes, this is actually the first moment we're actually confirming that the clown update is going to be in this PTB. And uh, so I can talk a little bit more about that teaser trailer that Dylan showed us a while ago. Um, the purple bottles are staying the same. So you can play clown 
the way you're used to. You throw a purple bottle, people get intoxicated, they slow down, you can hit them. You can switch to throwing yellow bottles and they have no effect until they turn yellow. So the gray cloud is like a placeholder until it turns yellow and activates. Any player entering a yellow cloud gets extra movement speed for a period of time. So it's it's called the afterpiece antidote. And if you're intoxicated by a purple cloud and you hit a yellow one, then it will remove that effect. And we're not just changing those bottles. We're also going to reduce the amount of time it takes to reload. That's going to be three seconds now. Yay, everybody cheer. Yay, I can hear it. I can hear it. (laughs) So, Ethan, what was the idea um, with adding a new type of gas to the the clown skit? Well, we wanted to uh, increase uh, potential for interesting plays with him. And we already like the way the purple models work. So we thought, let's give him two bottles. And since the purple ones are, you throw it someplace, and it says you don't want the survivors to go there, so you put a negative. The opposite would be you put a bottle someplace where you would like it if survivors went there, so you give them an encouragement. Um, So if there's a dead end over here, and there's a pallet over here, you throw a yellow here, and then the survivor's like, do I go for the pallet, or do I go for the yellow? Which, which is better, and it, it makes a little bit more cognitive load for the players. And then if, this, if the clown gets in there, then he is also going to pick up some extra speed. So it's, uh, it, it's to create more, uh, more interesting gameplay around him. I'm right, sorry, so I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, okay, so <laughs> the clown is the same, except for the fact that you can give survivors free movement speed. I don't know, am I missing something? Based matchmaking back in summer. Uh, well, it's coming back. Ethan, you have more info. Um, yeah, so the um, uh, the matchmaking system is no longer going to be based on your rank. It's going. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Let me go back. So you have the clown, which is the same as before. You, you if if the survivor steps on it or goes inside of it, and then steps in a yellow one, it you start moving at a normal speed. If you are, no wait, wait, wait. If you're, if you step in the purple um, gas like usual, and then you step on the yellow, it cancels it out. You you start moving slow like normally, right? If you step on the yellow, however, you get movement speed. So is clan really changing? Like, I would have thought that maybe it's like, if you if you step on if you have both debuffs like the. Uh, purple and the yellow then you would get exposed that was what i like that's what i thought it would be because yeah a lot of killers have insta down so ex- you know like they can expose you uh or insta down you but this doesn't make sense unless someone in the comments can tell me like okay so um this like it, it could be good for these uh like in this scenario and, and blah 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 J- just tell me because i don't know if i'm like understanding this correctly Okay, let's move on to the matchmaking. Um, All right, so all right. remember when we tested the skill-based matchmaking back in summer? Uh, well, it's coming back. Ethan, you have more info. Um, yeah, so oh, rank the, rewards. Um, uh, the matchmaking system is no longer going to be based on your rank. It's going to be based on uh, back-end calculated skill rating. And one of the great things about this is it means that each killer you play will have a different uh, setting for this. So I'm gonna, just going to have to say that this is a good idea because the current ranking, it doesn't work. This isn't like every game they have their own way of uh, uh, assigning people or deciding if a person is is a good player or not. So hidden stuff can be good sometimes. Um, so, But th- th- this is like the, the right way of thinking. You don't want to like give people a rank and be like, okay, you like we have it right now. Oh, you're rank one. It doesn't make a good player. Like it's... I've seen rank 5 play way better than rank 1s and the other way around. Like, it's it just... Yeah, the current one is bad. This next one might work. We'll see. Okay. So if you're, like, an absolutely amazing hillbilly player and you destroy everybody and then you say, I want to learn how to play nurse. That's smart. And you're terrible with her at the moment. You're not going to be playing against rank 1 survivors while you're trying to figure out how to play the nurse. So it's going to be, it's going to be better for survivors. It should be better for killers. Mm. And because of this... We now need something to do with ranks. So as soon as the uh, new matchmaking system goes live, we will be switching ranks to be a reward system where depending on the highest rank you reach Mm -hmm. during the month, you will get um, blood point rewards. 
and then at the end of each month your rank will reset to 20 and you'll build your way back up again and just to be clear your rank is not going to determine your matchmaking yeah, so when okay. we reset you to 20 it's only for the rewards not for who you get yeah, uh, okay. who you get put into games with um all right so uh those rank rewards they're also uh separated between killer and survivor so you i do have to say that one complaint i can al already i already have with this uh, is that 200 250,000k like 250k blood points it's not a lot it, it really isn't we sometimes get more blood points with um uh what's it called with just the codes and in before someone says oh you're greedy blah 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 the mobile dbd mobile they have bonus like they have these uh, um double bp events like every weekend or something like that they get it a lot the like the rest of us we get we get double bp uh, events like once or twice a year and it doesn't compare and we keep getting like more and more uh like perks uh, and new like chapters come out and we have to catch up i'm like i've prestiged uh, p3 all of my killers and survivors and i play a lot of dbd i play it on every single stream for hours and i can't catch up like i, I can't i sure eventually i will catch up but people who play less than me no freaking way they're they're able to catch up so it, it makes it really hard for people like us to or people in general to even aim for p3 it feels like p3 is just meant for people who just want a p3 one survivor maybe or you know but like all the survivors i almost have all the perks um on all survivors and they're all p3 yes okay i can i can manage with one side but if i want to do the same thing on the killers it is really difficult and i hope they do something about it but but i like the way they're doing like uh, that they give us blood points and not uh like uh, cells uh, what are they called uh iridescent shards because if you start giving people that has like money value that's when you start getting an influx of like cheaters and stuff like that so it, it is good that they're going with blood points um even though the legit players would probably have wanted like something else something cooler but uh, uh yeah you, you want to be careful with what you reward because again it could increase uh amount of cheaters and uh that like a lot of Games have, you know, a lot of games have that issue. But yeah, okay, let's continue. You can basically get those rewards twice. You Absolutely. get two high ranks on both. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I've heard that the clown is not the only one getting changes. Do you wanna, do you wanna add wraith. a little bit on this? I would love to. We've got true invisibility coming up for the wraith, which means that if you are more than 24 meters from him, you can't see him at all, not even a little bit. But once he gets within 16 meters, you will see it, the shimmer that you see now. And between 24 and 16, it will increase from being nothing to what you see now. So uh, you will no longer be able to see the wraith off in the distance on, on the map with his little shimmer bobbing around. Uh, another thing that we're, that we're fixing is the trapper's traps. I'm sorry, isn't this a little bit like Freddy? You know when you're awake and... You see Freddy from a distance. When he gets close enough, that's when he appears. Isn't that like very similar? I know it's not the exact same, but it's very similar. So, hmm. Should I assume that there is no ding ding dong anymore with Wraith? And I'm still interested to see like what it's got, like what the end result is going to be like. But I this just reminds me of Fre Freddy when he gets close enough, or when he's like close enough, that's when he appears. But yeah, okay. I don't know how many of you have done the math, but if you have a 25% chance to escape from a trap, that's only like a 60% chance to escape in the first four times. It's, it's around 60. Somebody's going to quote me on it being wrong because it's 63 or whatever, but... Uh, around it's, that. Yeah. It's around that. And you have a 10% chance of still being in the trap after like 10 attempts. It, it doesn't feel good. So we've changed it so that now it will take one to six attempts. When you step in the trap, no. we choose whether it be one, two, three, four, five, or six, and then that's how many times it will take. So it's never going to take more than six. This does mean that your rough chance of escaping each time is 16%. So the first attempt is going to be a little less likely, but it will never go to the long tail on the other side either. So on the whole, it's going to be uh, better for everybody. 
All right, uh, Ethan, so we're changing a couple of perks in this update. Uh, do you want to go over what we're testing? Yeah, sure. Um, we have a list, and it includes Diversion, also known as Pebble, Pebble. Uh, mm -hmm. Fixated, Hex Undying, Iron Maiden, Open Handed, and Second Wind. This is a list of perks we said we were going to update soon a while back on a dev stream, and they have made it through the pipeline, and here they are. All right. Uh, introducing Guillaume, game designer on Dead by Daylight. Welcome in, Guillaume. Hi, Gav. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, Guillaume is here today to discuss uh, the upcoming animation changes. Uh, can you explain to us why we're changing these animations? Uh, yeah, after I mean, after four years, uh, almost five, we felt that the game needed uh, animation side. We needed uh, to update those animations, just like give a visual update and a bit of uh, love to these uh, system as well. Not only the animations themselves, but the systems to be able to support uh, any other features moving forward. Uh, so we updated uh, some of the animation and uh, mostly the locomotion for survivors. All right. Um, so can you give us some example of what's coming? Uh, well, basically it's the locomotion. So the idle stance of the art tractors, both male and female, the run, the walk, the crouch, the injured mm. state, but also transition when you move from one direction to another. We added those transition. Uh, also a new crawling animation with uh, new turns and a, re a recover animation. So um, when we're talking okay, survivor cool. locomotion, what kind of uh, gameplay change should we expect uh, with these changes? Uh, in terms of gameplay, actual gameplay, uh, it should have not changed oh, at all. That's cool. I mean, that's the idea, and that's the reason why there's Don't a game designer that. talking about it as opposed to an animator, because it's mostly animation work, technical animation. but. One of the goals was to not change the actual gameplay and how Good. locomotion and navigation works in terms of uh, speeds, turn rates, accelerations, and things like that. But we definitely wanted to improve the looks, change the stance, um, the uh, the way the character uh, moves in terms of body movement and aesthetics. All right. And uh, so we're talking about locomotions, which normally would be... Sorry, uh, once again. Uh... I don't know if this is gonna. F have you guys ever done this? When you load into a map and you click on escape twice, and then you use your flashlight at the start, you know when the camera spins, uh, sometimes the character will like freaking break her arm and like flashlight click. I don't know if this is like if it's <laughs> if this is one of those things that could get fixed. I don't know. It's not a game breaking like problem, but it would be cool to you know know if that's like if that would also get changed because of the animation. But yeah. Uh, in movement, right? Uh, our other animation also changed. For example, uh, cleansing totem, uh, entering lockers. I don't know, throwing a pebble, tea bagging, things like that. Uh, most of them no, because they're interactions, and we did not touch uh, interactions because this is again, it's a different topic. Uh, it has an impact on gameplay, and this is something else for the future. Though. Uh, like teabagging, for example, which is which is uh, crouching, which is a locomotion, <laughs> uh, kind of a gameplay. We did update that uh, animation. Well, actually, before there was no animation at all. It was just a blending. So we put in an animation and we kind of iterated on it to make sure that teabagging still feels uh, <laughs> satisfying to our players. We, uh, we I like this guy. That. But uh, it should should play the same. All right. Well. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Guillaume. And uh, I think that's the awkward moment where we say bye. <laughs> Please don't keep that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that we're done with the video, I just want to check something. Uh, they should have some pictures of the new maps, right? Oh, graphics update. In case you missed it, reveal the next realms do for a graphic updates are the Gideon Meat Plant and the Crotus Pren Asylum. Here's a sneak peek. Jeez. I like this. Uh, what else do we have? Ooh. Is this the... Wait, is this the game? 
<laughs> no offense, but the current game is very confusing. It's um, and but I'm also not a big fan of indoor maps to begin with. So maybe they do make a change which makes it more appealing. You know, more fun to play. But I just feel like indoor maps and and DBD they don't really get along that well. Um. All right then. So we've watched everything. Um. Let me know what you guys think in the in the comment section below. Uh, again, I don't really do these videos often, if any at all. Uh, I've given you my opinions. We've watched the video together. Uh, and yeah, uh, I think they, I'm pretty sure they have more details uh, in this like blog post. So I will, I will post it in the, in this description so you guys can check it out. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. What, what, what are you guys still doing here? I said bye. Go, go away. Go, shoo. Go away, go.